Bowman here from BW1.com. I'm going to give you my review of the Pantech Breakout for Verizon. The Pantech Breakout is a mid-range 4G LTE device on Verizon, sort of the first of its kind in the mid-range area because it goes for about $100 on contract after $50 mailing rebate. And we'll start off here with a quick hardware tour. You do get a four inch um, LCD display. Right above that is the front facing camera. Right here at the bottom, you do have your sort of your op, uh, navigation keys here, the physical buttons for menu, home, back, and search. On the side, you have your headphone jack, volume rocker, you have a voice command key. On this side, you have the micro USB port right, beside, right below, behind the battery door there. You have the power unlock button, you have your dedicated camera key there. On the back, you have your speakerphone. And you also have a 5 megapixel camera with uh, 720p HD video recording. We uploaded our test pictures and videos. It's attached to the review. You can check the link in the description for that. It's pretty decent as far as the image and video quality is with out of the camera there. Slide open this battery bay door here. It has this nice, like, soft, not soft, but sort of rigid plastic finish here on the back. But you see the 1500 milliamp hour battery, 8 gigabyte pre installed SD card, and you also micro SD card, and you also have the 4G OT SIM card also pre installed. Internally, it runs a 1 GHz Snapdragon processor. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, 4G LTE data speeds. And it's running for software Android 2.3 Gingerbread with a unique sort of UI on top of it from Pantech. All right, this is the lock screen here. It kind of works like how HTC Sense works, where you kind of slide the icon in the center there to a little circle to get where you want to go. So it'll slide to unlock it like that. And this is the main desktop here. And sort of the way the interface looks, it reminds me a lot of the Verizon feature phones, similar to the uh, LG Chocolate Touch and those type of phones, sort of the way their UI look when it, that's sort of the brew, brew, um, brew MP style of uh, cell phones over there. That's kind of what the operating system they use. So this what this kind of reminds me of. You get seven desktops and you can kind of swipe like that or pinch like that to kind of choose between the two, between all, all of all seven rather. And you can also hold right at the notification of the indicator right there at the top, right below the notification section right there where the desktop indicator is, you get a 3D carousel that you can use as well too to choose. And you get some custom widgets like the social networking one here. You can include Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace if you still use it. You can also add widgets as well too. You have the standard Android widgets and you have the Pantech ones. And it gives us a nice little cool UI when you want to add them. You can kind of swipe through. And let's say you want to add a new uh, weather one weather widget just hold down that icon drag it onto desktop and it'll give you options between the style of widget and you can choose the one you can select the city which we're in Boston and just like that you've added your widget and we'll slide down here to remove that particular widget but um, like I said seven desktops you got a couple of those unique features that you can use within a desktop we'll actually swipe down here to the notification section you, you probably have seen this before on some of the Samsung devices where you have your notifications here at the bottom then here at the top you have quick access to different connections. They've actually added a whole nother row if you hit that icon down to more quick access settings. They added stuff like mobile hotspot, airplane mode, you have Bluetooth and sound settings as well too. Pretty cool there and makes it really unique. Go ahead and head back home here. We'll open up the apps tray. Open that up. You can see some of the pre-installed applications that they have. You can't uninstall any of them so you have uh, Vcast, you have NFL Mobile, Need to Proceed Shift, you have Let's Golf. And you have a pretty cool task manager, which I want to show you how that works. Now, obviously, in this section, you'll be your running tasks. But what I like about this one, what's really unique about it here, is that not only does it tell you for system your internal memory and external memory, but it also tells you your CPU usage and your network usage as well, too, which I think is pretty cool that they've added that on there. You can see that we've received 157 kilobits. It kind of comes and goes as, as, you're, using, as you're using the 4G LTE on it. Your CPU speed, you have the internal memory, which you have 346 megabytes available for installing applications and such. And then you have external memory, which is the 8 gigabyte SD card, 7.5 gigabytes is available to use. 54.88 megabytes is currently being used on that SD card. And um, you can obviously, for applications, if you run out of space here, you can install on the SD card if you want to, too. And it gives you some extra tips and stuff like that. It's all like pretty cool stuff. I kind of like the way that task manager works. But um, you get stuff like also pre-install like TuneWiki, NetMedia, uh, pretty pretty much VZ Navigator. It's stuff that you would kind of expect on a Verizon phone pre-installed. You can't uninstall any of it, however. Okay, we're going to quickly check out the browser here to show you guys some of the, the browser speeds. Let's 
go over to Borderworks website as soon as I type it right. So you can see it's a standard browser, but you can at least see the full GLT speed on it. And we'll do a little pinch to zoom as well, too, because I know a lot of people like that stuff. All right. It looks like this default in here is Bing, but you can obviously change it to Google if you want to. See how fast it loads up. You can see 4GLT Verizon. It's just it's just fast. All right, we've had to load up fully, and then we'll do some pinching and zooming, which I know a lot of people like to see. Standard Android browser, though, the one you see on all the phones. So there's some pinch to zoom there. It's a little slow, not as smooth as you would I would like it. We'll rotate it here like that. We'll swipe up a little bit. All right, there you go. So you get an idea of how pinch to zoom works on here. You saw the keyboard there as well. We'll go over the keyboard real quickly and do like a message here. You saw that you had swipe available so you can use that if you want to. And they do have another keyboard available which is the Android keyboard if you want to use that instead to type along here too. So if you do have two keyboards available you can also install your own custom keyboard if you wish. Alright, we'll go back head home here. I'll quickly show you the camera. So the camera application here. Open that up. There we go. It's pretty simple. It's laid out pretty decently as well, too. You can switch between the front and rear camera pretty easily just by going like that. Hello. Switch back to the rear facing camera there. And you can just simply snap a shot. And um, you can have it share, send as, or delete. You also get this extra option of being able to zoom in deeper if you want to, like that, even after you've taken the picture. So that's pretty cool that you get that quick option there. That's pretty much it for the camera application and pretty much the device overall. Uh, its performance is it's pretty good. It's what you expect out of a single core processor from about a year ago. Um, if you're going to use live, live wallpaper, it's going to slow down the phone some. You're going to see some lag there. But if you keep it pretty much on stationary wallpaper and, and, and you're not using intensive applications, it, it pretty much is a pretty smooth experience. Overall, the, the phone's pretty good in terms of call quality. I can hear people, people can hear me well. The call quality is excellent on that. You saw the Fuji data speeds that worked well as, as well too. Battery life is pretty decent on it. I would say if, if you're a power user, you're probably gonna charge at least one more time during the day. And this phone is aimed at the mid-range, so, so if you're sort of a moderate user, you're probably gonna be able to get a full day on one charge. If you're a light user, or if you're a new user to Android and you, you want to get started, this is a really good starter phone for that. The battery life is probably going to go about a day and a half. Where I, and that's where I pretty much think the Pantech breakout is kind of focused towards, especially with the UI layout and such. It looks very similar to the future phones that are on Verizon's network that don't use Android, like I said, like the LG Chocolate Touch or the Cosmos and those, those type of phones. I'm not sure if the Cosmos is a brew phone or not, but it's basically the phones that are future phones that don't have smartphone OS on top of it. So that's sort of how the Verizon kind of sort of UIs theirs, and that's what this pretty much has on it here, and pretty much how they probably want to kind of transition people over to this type of phone, and it's, it's sort of an entry smartphone. It's it's good good entry level to Android and such, and you get 4G speeds on it, and you're not breaking the banks. So overall, definitely give the phone a thumbs up. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com. This was our review of the Pantech Breakout. Remind you subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Twitter. Become a fan of our Facebook fan page. Also check out, check out our full written review. The link to that and all social media is in the description. And always remember to live your tech world in high definition.